Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how I reverse engineered this salvaged LED display module which came from a cinema lobby display board to show the movie times and movie titles etc. I actually did a video on this a few years ago, just a short video and I've had a few comments from people that have bought these from the seller on eBay asking how I reverse engineered it so they'd like to get it working as well. So I thought I'd do a quick video on how to reverse engineer an unknown LED module like this. Um, this particular unit is manufactured by Data Display, uh, which is now part of Dactronics. Uh, the part number is DL110 and there appears to be two versions of this display. This is the older one, which uses throw-well components. The newer version uses surface melt components. Uh, now as you can see, I'm using an Arduino nano to power this display um, but yeah I'm going to show you how to reverse such a thing so yeah let's get to it okay like I was saying the first thing you need to do with such a display like this which is unknown is take a look at the chips on the board see what we've got now displays like this will always have a set of road drivers and data which is fed in to shift registers, which will send data in the, to the columns. <coughs> Since this display has got seven rows, so these are your row drivers here, and these are your shift registers, uh, uh, eight-bit shift registers, so there'll be eight columns per shift register. So you just basically need to just first step look at the chips. So we've got here, we've got an MIC five eight. 21BN, which is a power shift register that's capable of driving LEDs directly via current limiting resistor modules, which are here. These are resistor networks. Uh, what else have we got? No, I just have to get my light. Just bear with me a minute. Yeah, the exposure on the camera's focusing on the tablet screen, so right, we've got a SN74HC164, which is a that's a shift register as well. Um, we've got a 74HC08, which is, uh, another one here, a Toshiba TD6208. 62083AP and a 74HC373. So I've already reverse engineered this, so what I just need to do is, and obviously that's your input connector there. So turn that off a minute. Right, now I know by reverse engineering this before, the 74H3373 is a latch and that is a AND gate and that is a MOSFET COM transistor driver so what you'll find is likely these chips here well they are, they're being used as buffers so the latch inputs on these chips are actually held high so it's always on and the AND gate has just been used as a buffer. It's basically used to clean up the signals before they go to the shift registers because as the channels down along chain from the main logic board, there be, could be a long ribbon cable which will introduce noise into the signal. So these are chips here are really just to clean up the signal. So, so in order to do that, what you're best doing is starting off at the back end of the circuit. So we'll start with the column drivers first. So what we need to do is grab the data sheet for these chips. Okay, so I'll put up the data sheet for the uh, shift registers. So pin one is clock. Now the clock pins will be connected together, so we'll just verify that by using the meter connected to diode check mode. So they'll beep when you touch your probes together. Like that. Yep. So all the clock pins are connected together. You strobe output enable. 
It's pin seven. They're all connected together. Strobe, it's pin six. They're all connected together. Just that's normal for a shift register. So your data in is pin two, which will goes into the shift register, and your data out, which is pin five. One, two, three, four, five. Go to data in on the second chip. Does. So data's fed in at this end rather than that end. So so we've got your three signals which you need your clock data strobe or output enable strobe with the latch strobe with latch different manufacturers call it different things so let's start with the data pin see where that goes there so that then goes to pin three of the hand gate which is an output so then you'll need to trace back to the input, which is pinned one and two. They're connected together. So this will then go to the input connector. It does, there we go. So see when that's pinned one. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So pin 13 is your data input. So that's easy. Next, strobe. Uh, sorry, my mistake. Pin 1 is a clock, not data in. So pin 13 is clock. So data in. Put that onto pin 2 and repeat the same procedure. Right, doesn't go to that chip. Pin, pin three, and it's catched directly, so that doesn't go through a buffer. So there you go. So I've already got the clock and data input pins on the input connector. Uh, you want to go for strobe, which is one, two, three, five. Not connected to it, that chip. But you get the right, that's not connected to anything that could be that that's just tied to five volts. Um, let's have a look, just verify that. Could be that that's not used. Right, output enable. I think I remember these modules. They do actually use a weird setup where they're using the output enable pin instead of the latch. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Right, so output enable. Again, there you go. Goes to an output. So your input, you then connect to the. There we go. Pin 11. Pin 11 is the uh, output enable. So that's the uh, column part of the circuit mapped. I'll go away, don't want that. Now the row driver. Now to get the data sheet for the um, Toshiba power transistor driver. Right, that's the data sheet data sheet for the power transistor driver. Uh, input 1. We actually want to look at the outputs which is pin 18. That will go to one of these power transistors down here. It almost certainly will. So I want to go to the input of pin 1. That, right, that goes to the latch. So, you need to find the input now. 
So I need to dig out the dirt sheet for that one now. Right, okay, so the output of that was... Q1, so that should be, that'll be the first transistor on the pin. So that'll be the top row, or bottom row. So Q1, uh, input is pin 3, so that should go to the connector. It does pin one, pin two. So pin two is line address zero. So basically you repeat the same procedure until you've mapped out the connections for all seven row drivers. And that's pretty much it. The other thing we need to watch out for is the output and everyone we'll latch on this chip, which is three, which is one and eleven. These will be likely connected to uh, power, which they are. Uh, yeah. Connected to ground, so the watch is disabled. Output enable should be enabled. So that is output enable. So, so output enable is tied to ground, so it's always on. Watch is pin 11. So one, two, five, six, seven, eight, That's tied to 5 volts. So, so yeah, that's just, just basically using that as a buffer. Um, but yeah, how I got this working was the ID you know, rather than have seven pins driving the rows, what I did instead was use a shift register down here. So the row address lines are connected to the output of the shift register here, and the input goes to the input of the shift register goes to the ID you know. So that's basically got two serial outputs, one for column drive and one for row drive. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, really reverse engineering something, it's just a matter of starting at the back of the circuit and gradually working your way backwards. Um, you'll see if you watch on its engineer, you'll find this. You'll know how to do this, but it just bits good for people that have bought some of these units and want to figure out how to get them working. Uh, the other gotcha you got to is. Um, these are PMP drivers, so your row select pins have got to be inverted. So that's your other gotcha as well. So you've got to watch out for that. So logic zero turns the output on, and logic one turns it off. Uh, but you can do that in your code to drive it. I mean, I've seen some people that have bought these use a Raspberry Pi to power it. I've obviously used an Arduino, but but yeah. Um, oh, that explains something. Um, obviously, board you've got might be different. I mean, like I said, there's two versions of these. One that uses surface mount chips with a lower chip count. It's basically the same procedure. Start at the, get the data sheets for the chips, and work backwards till you eventually reach reach the input connector. Uh, and that pretty much sums it up. Uh, thanks for watching.